Okay, so hello, welcome back to another Unity video where today I'll be talking about Unite 2023. So a few weeks ago, Unity kindly flew me and a bunch of other content creators out to Unite in Amsterdam. Our event was a few days long, consisting of various networking opportunities, culminating on the Thursday with Unite itself. Once we arrived at Unite that morning, it wasn't very long before the keynote, which was opened by Jim Whitehurst, the new interim CEO for Unity. Once his opening speech had concluded, we were then shown what had been happening in Unity in recent times, in terms of features in the engine and developments they'd been making. This mainly served as a reminder, but for people like me who don't use every single aspect of the engine, it's quite nice to know about what had been happening in rendering and graphics, for example, the area that I don't really touch myself very often. And then after talking about recent developments, they then moved on to talk about the future for Unity and how, starting next year, they're going to be going back to the old way of versioning. So the next version of Unity we're going to be getting next year is Unity 6 instead of the usual 2023 point whatever. There are definitely some good things that will come from this, as opposed to it just being a naming change, which is that Unity won't be forced into doing certain releases at certain times in the year when maybe they're not ready, maybe certain things are getting rushed or delayed because of this, whereas with the new Unity, they'll just release updates when they need to, it won't need to be twice a year at certain points in the year. And another small advantage is that it'll be a lot easier when people are talking about what version they're using, it'll be a bit easier to remember, oh I'm on Unity 6 or Unity 6.1 rather than Unity 2023.2 or something like that. And after that announcement, we were then shown their Fantasy Kingdom demo, which was all about the graphics and rendering pipeline. And honestly, this is one of my favorite parts of the keynote, even as someone who doesn't really know anything about the render pipelines or what the performance bottlenecks are, but they were showing various comparisons between certain settings being turned on and how that can make a drastic performance increase. And then at the end, they even showed how they had two different baked scenarios for lighting for day and night, and how using the timeline you could transition between these and have a day-night cycle. And then they gave a talk on multiplayer tools, which is a bit more up my alley. Now, I haven't used every single tool on here, but I have used Netco for game objects, integrated with Relay, Lobby, Matchmaker, multiplayer hosting. But if any of the other things on here are of interest to you, then I would be interested in covering them in tutorials if you want anything to do with moderation, voice chat, text chat, friends, leaderboards, netcode for entities even, then just let me know and I can definitely do tutorials on that. And then they focused in on a few of these tools and how certain developers recently have released games using them in production, such as Ship of Fools and Hysteria. After that, we were then shown a new tool in beta called the Asset Manager, which is basically going to exist outside of your project where you can upload your assets, you can put descriptions on them, tags, various different things like that, and then you can use this in any of your projects. So if you have maybe multiple games all using the same asset base, then this is a good way to set that up. And even on a single project, I can definitely see this being useful when your artists are coming in with their models, dropping them onto this, setting up their name, description, tag, status, all the various things you can set, and then inside of the engine you can just access them and chuck them into the game. And then we had a talk about Unity Muse, which is their AI suite, so we got Muse Sprite, Muse Texture, and then various other Muse tools. Now personally I'm not as interested in this and I don't think I'll be covering it on the channel, but there is some promising stuff going on here. Now I think I'm in the boat of people who are just going to kind of wait and see what happens with this. Some of the things do look interesting, like the new things, Muse Animate, Muse Behavior, and Muse Sketch, though it's not something I'm going to be covering on the channel anytime soon. I'll simply be watching from the sidelines, looking at the developments they're making, and then maybe one day I'll decide to give it a go. And to wrap up the keynote, they were talking about Unity's cross-platform capabilities, which as we know, that's what Unity is known for, how easy it is to create your game once and ship it anywhere, as they were saying. And then there were some previews of various mobile and VR titles as they wrapped up the keynote. And then that was it for the keynote. So after this, we had the rest of the day to ourselves. There were talks happening in various different rooms around the convention center, and I'd signed up to some of these beforehand. And then out of those other talks that I went to, two of them stood out to me especially. There was the UI Toolkit talk, which has made me look a lot more forward to working with UI Toolkit in the future. So when I've got my hands on that, I'll be definitely making videos on it. And then the other one were the advancements in the multiplayer section. Something exciting here is the multiplayer center that's going to be coming next year in Unity 6. 
So as you'll see here, we have a UI window where you can select what type of multiplayer game you're making, and you can start filling in all the other parts. Is it competitive, casual, how many players, what kind of game is it, fast paced, slow paced, do you want to use netcode for game objects or entities, and then what various tooling do you want, and then it'll just install everything you need in one go. It'll make creating a multiplayer project a lot faster, and it means that you won't miss any tools that you don't know exist, because they'll all be here under this little hub. And then from here you can also access the samples very easily in case you want to know how a certain feature works. They'll then be making it a lot easier to test multiplayer games locally by easily being able to spin up multiple instances of the game, which is something that Unity's been missing for a very long time. So yeah, I think those are the main things that I'm excited for from Unite, and I imagine most of my audience is interested in the same kind of stuff, so hopefully that was interesting to you too. Now for those of you who have stuck around to the end and are wondering why I haven't been uploading much this year, I've really been wanting to, but I've just been so bogged down with a lot of different things. I've been working on courses with Game Dev TV, and we've recently released a Unity multiplayer course covering netcode for game objects, and matchmaker, dedicated server hosting, relay lobby, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to check that out, that would be amazing. And then I've also been working on another course with Game Dev TV that I'm not ready to announce just yet what that is. And then in my own time, I've been working on a personal project in Unreal. I've been learning Godot and doing more stuff in Unity. So that's why I haven't found much time to do videos for the channel. And then at the very least in the new year, I do want to start doing videos showing you at least what I've been up to, even if I'm not going to be doing full on tutorials at that point, but I do want to get back into doing tutorials. And with the upcoming stuff with UI Toolkit and also the multiplayer hub and the other features that are adding to UGS, I think that's quite a few good ideas for content to cover in tutorials. So do let me know down below what you think about the recent Unity developments and what features are coming that you'd be interested in seeing tutorials for. But with that said, that's it for this video. Thanks again to Unity for flying me out to Unite, and I hope to see you all again in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Godless Goth, Francisco Lira, and Sahila. If anyone else would like to help support the channel monetarily, the link to Patreon will be down below. If not, then there'll be links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by checking any of those out, that would be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.